Hello friends, I'm Brian, and this is Gizmo Board Games. Today it is the beginning of yet another month, so you know what that means if you've been around for a year or more at this point. Uh, every first Sunday of the month I take a look back at the videos I put out in the previous month and the new to me games that I enjoyed in, you know, rank order of how I enjoyed them. So now that it is September already of 2023, let's look back at what I did in August of 2023. It was a, a busier month for me, you know, the, the summer was here, uh, kids getting back to school towards the end of the month, and just general everything going on. Uh, I got a lot less in in this month, I, one of the slower months in quite a while, actually. I did produce five videos, if you didn't get to see them all, uh, you might want to check your subscription, ring the bell, whatever the case is, that way you get notifications, and sub, of course, if you haven't already. Uh, but... I did five videos in August, the first one being the July uh, in review video, this video for the previous month. And, and then I did the look back at 10 years ago. I've been doing this kind of 5, 10, and 15 plus year look back at the games I enjoy and the games I still want to check out and expansions in that realm. So in this past month, I looked back at the games from 10 years ago, 2013, and then talked about how they've stood up the test of time and whether or not I enjoyed them. So check that out if you haven't already. After that, I had my little My Favorite Component video for Clank, a deck building adventure game. So if you're interested in what component I thought really stood out from the Clank series, check out that short, like, three-minute video. And then I did a discussion of the first four Feld Cities collection games, and I talked about how they play and my order of favorites for the first four in the Queen Feld, Stefan Feld, that is, the designer, Cities collection game that has been released. There are two more on the way, and I discussed the first four in that video. And then finally, uh, I did a preview video for Jim Pyre, Zarman's Demands, a game that's coming to Kickstarter later this month. The 27th, I believe, is the launch date. You should be able to go uh, click the notify me uh, on Kickstarter if you are interested in that. Check out my video for more information on how it plays and then my thoughts, both pros and cons for that based on the review copy I received. So that's it for the videos I put out last month. Let's go ahead and get into the games I played. Let's get looking at the stats. First of all, I only played 28 total games. That's less than one game a month, which is below my norm. Usually I get more than a game a month on average played, but I only played 28 games in a 31 day month. 19 of those games were different games, so therefore, you know, nine were replays of the same game. And we'll get to that in the honorable mention because I did replay one game quite a few times. Uh, finally, there were six new to me games, and we'll talk about the five uh, that are, are physical copies that I played, and I will rank those from five to one. And then the sixth game is an honorable mention, much like last month when I talked about Zarm or Jim Pyre's Armin's Demands being a not real game that I played a review copy of. I've been playing a preview version of a game to be released in the future. So we'll get to that here really shortly. And then lastly, I did, you know, seven replays for my 10 by five solo challenge and other reasons to replay games, you know, because you like playing the games and your family likes playing those games and you play it with them again. All right. So let's get into the games I played in August of 2023, starting with an honorable mention and then ranking them in my enjoyment order from five to one. First, the honorable mention is an upcoming Garfield game. I've been playing mostly, actually only the solo mode, but I believe it plays the same as the multiplayer mode. I've just been playing it solo on Tabletop Simulator and given feedback to kind of help them make those adjustments for when the game releases. I think later this year or early next year, that should be on Kickstarter. It is Ezra and Nehemiah. It's a game based on the biblical figures uh, as Ezra and Nehemiah. I not follow any of that storyline or anything, but the game is very enjoyable. And, and I like the feedback they've been taking from the solo players in making adjustments to the solo mode. And it's just been a lot of fun. I played that three or four times 
this this month on Tabletop Simulator. But since it's not a real game, I'm not going to throw it into the rankings and we'll wait for it to come out for real sometime in the next year or so and then everybody can have their hands on it. So let's talk about my number five favorite or best liked or whatever new to me game that I played this past month. It is a little button shy game that I finally arrived. It is apropos of board games. It's a game where you're just laying out a, a, a concept for board games, you know, such as solo, play solo, or has farming, or has uh, meeples. I don't remember what they all are offhand. Um, but you think of a game, and then if you, you think of a game that has that element, and then you draw the next card, and you have to do the opposite. So if the game you already thought of matches, the second element you pull out, you have to put it in the does not have element. And then you got to think of a new game that has the first element, but does not have the second element. And it's a game you go like that until you try to think of five or six different games that meet whatever is on the layout of the board. And it obviously gets harder as it goes because you're going to have more tight uh, paring down of what you need to meet. Uh, this was an activity that I spent some time on a couple times, and that was it. I don't really consider it much of a board game. It played in like two minutes, three minutes flat, depending on how long it takes you to think of a game that meets things until you just kind of run out of ideas and, and give up. I didn't officially win either time. I just got to the point where I couldn't think of anything new to bring to the table. and That was it. Not much of a board game, uh, more of a... a up an icebreaker if you got a group of gamers together you can warm up with that while you're waiting for like your last friend or arrival of the cases i think it'll fill that role pretty good my fourth favorite new to me game from august was river wild another button shy game that arrived and this one felt kind of like unsurmountable in reverse where you're laying out the cards you you have one three to choose from i believe you're going to play one each turn and you're trying to connect them to river or land elements to score points based on the final layouts and the animals that you can enclose in little islands and the scoring on the cards adjacent to them. And you're just trying to build up the best river uh, to score points based on the animals in the river layouts and things like that. It's an okay game. I think I still prefer Unsurmountable, which is another okay game that I have other button shy games that I just prefer at solo. So I'm not sure how often I'm gonna come back to these, but they're good little filler games for one player and in a small wallet that you can take anywhere. So enjoyable, does what it needs to do in a few minutes and then move on. My number three favorite game from August, 2023 is right behind me, it's Yinsh, uh, my newest game too. It's a two player abstract strategy game, kind of checkers or Othello or backgammon-esque where you're moving rings around and then you're gonna flip the tokens from you know white or black, depending on you know, what they were before as you cross over them. And you're trying to get five in a row of your color three times. When you do that three times, you win the game. But every time you do it, you're going to lose one of your rings of the five on the board. So you're going to have less and less options as the game goes on. And your opponent might have, you know, more options if they weren't as good at making those lines. I am not good at abstract games. I've learned this a few times. I'm not good at chess. I'm okay at checkers. I was really not good at this game the couple times I played it, um, but it was fun. It's enjoyable. It's good thinkiness. I'm just not good at them. So, Yinch, fun game. I'm just not good at it. All right, number two and number one. I had a hard time figuring out which one I liked more. I like them both for different reasons. I played them both solo, except for one exception, and I'll go ahead and mention that when I get to it because it's going to be in the number one. Number two is going to be Kanban EV. I really like this game. It's a heavy, thinky, Vital Serta game about getting car uh, parts and getting car designs and then trying to turn those designs into built cars that you've tested. And just, it's a fun, thinky strategy game where you have five, well, five places you can take actions and two or three actions at any given space. So it's just another one of those really thinky games that doesn't have a lot going on, but does because again, you're gonna to go to one of five places and take two or three actions at that place. But just the things you need to do to try to score well is 
well woven in and it's a, a solid thinky euro that i really enjoyed I, I like the theme even though i'm not a car guy i i could feel the flow of the theme because you know you need to get designs and parts before you can make a car you want to test the car before you collect the car things like that it really flowed smoothly i played this only solo but the solo mode is decent because unlike the solo mode for the other uh, Lacerda game, I have uh, Vinos, which I've talked about in the past. This one, your score does matter. You're basically, whatever your opponents do takes away from your score, and whatever you do adds to your score, and you just want to finish with a positive score. So there's no hidden, well, yeah, but you didn't do these things, so you lose that Vinos had. So I do like that. Plus, the solo mode replicates three players on the board instead of just one other player. So Kanban EV, really enjoyable. I uh, have a lot of fun playing it through and can't wait to introduce it to other players. Just eking that out in the enjoyment factor for me for the past month is the Castles of Burgundy. I have the big box. I think you can kind of see part of it behind me up there. Uh, I just really enjoyed getting this one out. Uh, it's a great dice selection action game where you're just building up your tableau of tiles and those tiles are doing different things based on the color and what images on some of them that are um, the, the city buildings and the uh, not the castles but I don't remember what they're called the yellow ones are going to be like in-game scoring or, or special benefits for just you the abstract strateginess of it or the asynchronous that you can add and this one I did play on um, board game arena as well as the solo version on the table so I think I got three or four plays of this one in as well this month, and I have enjoyed a lot of it. It's in the top 100 board game geek games for a reason, and I am very happy to have the full-on collection because I've only delved into the basic solo stuff. There's so much more to explore in there, including the new Vineyards expansion. So I have plenty to check out still. And that's my top five not many new-to-me games, but I thought this was a really good month for new games i enjoyed pretty much all of them and even the one i didn't officially rank it was very enjoyable as well so while it wasn't a lot on the table this month i had a lot of enjoyment out of what i did play if you like this video give me a thumbs up subscribe below if you're not a subscriber already and let me know in the comments below what you've been playing and what you think i should check out based on my rankings of these games i look forward to hearing from you and i look forward to seeing you in the next video bye